In this video, we explore the Southern theater battles of the Revolutionary War in 1781, including the battles of Calpins, Guilford Courthouse, Chesapeake, and Yorktown. We also look at the Treaty of 1783, which ended the war and gave America its independence. The Battle of Cowpens was fought on January 17, 1781, near Cowpens, South Carolina. American forces in the South were led by Major General Nathaniel Greene. In December of 1780, Greene split his forces into two wings. He commanded one while having Brigadier General Daniel Morgan lead the other in locating additional supplies and raising support for the revolution. Lieutenant Colonel Banner Stratarleton was sent to crush Morgan's army when the British learned that Green split his forces. The battle was a disaster for the British, thanks to Morgan's leadership and wisdom. Once Tarleton and his dragoons approached Cowpens, American skirmishers fired at them, baiting the British to move closer toward the infantry Morgan had placed on a hill. After quickly becoming surrounded, the British lost the battle and retreated. The Americans suffered around 150 casualties, while the British suffered over 300, plus 600 British were captured. The Battle of Cowpens was a major loss for the British. It forced General Cornwallis to abandon his plans of pacifying South Carolina and instead pursued Greene into North Carolina. The Battle of Guilford Courthouse was fought on March 15, 1781, near Greensboro, North Carolina. Lieutenant General Charles Cornwallis decided to pursue the Americans into North Carolina after losing a quarter of his army at the Battle of Cowpens. These patriots were led by Major General Nathaniel Greene, who gathered additional supplies and soldiers during the retreat. Green then camped his 4,400 troops near the Guilford Courthouse. Even though Cornwallis only had 1,900 men, he attacked the Americans anyway. Taking inspiration from Calpins, Green set up three lines of defense. However, they were all quite spread apart and therefore unable to support each other. The British suffered heavy fire from the Patriots, but were able to push through and break all three defenses, forcing Green and his men to retreat. The Battle of Guilford Courthouse was a costly tactical victory for the British as they suffered high casualties. Cornwallis abandoned his Carolinas campaign and instead advanced into Virginia, leading to the Battle of Yorktown. The Battle of the Chesapeake was fought on September 5, 1781 at Chesapeake Bay, Virginia. In the summer of 1781, General George Washington began to plan a major attack against the British. At first, Washington wanted to strike New York City, but Comte de Rochambeau convinced Washington that Yorktown was the better target since British General Cornwallis had stationed his army there. Rochambeau ordered French Admiral de Grasse to sail his fleet from the West Indies to the Chesapeake Bay and set up a blockade and prevent Cornwallis from retreating. British ships led by Admiral Graves quickly sailed to Chesapeake, but the French arrived first. The French fleet consisted of 24 ships, while the British only had 19. The French quickly defeated the British, killing or wounding over 300 men, while only suffering 200 casualties. De Grasse also landed several thousand troops at Yorktown. The Battle of the Chesapeake was a massive strategic loss for the British. Graves' badly damaged ships sailed back to New York, abandoning Cornwallis at Yorktown without any hope for reinforcements and supplies. The Battle of Yorktown was fought from September 28th to October 19th, 1781, near Yorktown, Virginia. During the summer of 1781, General Washington learned that British General Cornwallis had encamped his men near Yorktown. After the French Rear Admiral Comte de Grasse blockaded Cornwallis with his fleet, Washington realized it was time to attack. Washington and Lieutenant General Comte de Rochambeau led over 16,000 American and French troops against Cornwallis and his 7,500 men. On October 9th, we began a week-long non-stop bombardment of British positions, and on October 14th, stormed British redoubts number 9 and number 10. The British quickly became surrounded and unable to defend themselves effectively. Cornwallis continuously requested reinforcements from General Henry Clinton without any luck. Surrounded and with significant casualties, Cornwallis opened negotiations with Washington. On October 19th, the British officially surrendered, and Cornwallis and his troops were taken prisoner. The Battle of Yorktown effectively ended the war. The Treaty of Paris in 1783 officially ended the American Revolutionary War. Britain sought to end hostilities after losing at Yorktown in 1781. Paris peace talks began in 1782, and the principal American negotiators were me, John Adams, and John Jay. Initially at the talks, England refused to recognize American independence, and the Americans wanted to ensure their allies, France and Spain, were looked after too. 
The treaty was finalized on September 3rd, 1783. Most notably, Britain recognized America as an independent nation. America's borders would be those of 1763, extending west to the Mississippi River. America also won valuable fishing rights off British-controlled Canadian waters. The treaty also ensured British loyalists and their property would be protected and treated fairly. Pre-war debts also had to be repaid. Britain signed treaties with American allies collectively known as the Peace of Paris. Britain ceded the Florida to Spain, and France got Senegal and fishing rights off Canada.